Um, ben upset many people yesterday, so we sent him 33 metres beneath the ground. He's under an ordinary street in Clapham at an underground future farm. Um, ben, this is what happens when you misbehave. It looks fascinating, though. Morning. <laughs> This place is amazing. Um, who knew that this was here? We're about 100 feet under the pavements of South London. Uh, you might just make out the rumble of the tube train next door. Uh, and this place is potentially the future of farming. It is an underground farm in a disused uh, air raid uh, shelter. Um, you might be able to make out quite how vast this place is. It just goes on all the way down there and they're growing all sorts of things here uh, salad crops that basically will end up on your plate they'll end up in the supermarket uh, and it is all the work of this man let me introduce you to Richard who's one of the co-founders here at Going Underground and also Morgan who's a, a food futurologist it's hard to say good morning to you both morning. Richard just talk us through what's here it looks pretty yeah. impressive what are you growing so uh, good morning uh, and um, so here at Going Underground we're a data-driven uh, controlled environment urban farm we're 30 metres under the streets of London, as you said, and um, we use hydroponics and LEDs to produce microgreens, which are tiny herbs packed full of flavour that are also packed full of nutrition. We pack them on site here. We ship them into New Covent Garden Market, which is less than a mile down the road from here. And from there, our product is distributed over the capital to hotels, restaurants and retailers. We also supply many of the major retailers as well around the country. And we uh, power the site entirely by renewable energy, and we're working towards carbon neutrality. It, I mean, it looks really impressive. It looks really futuristic, really sci-fi. But you were telling me earlier as well, I mean, what you get down here is pretty efficient because it means you're not subject to the weather. You're not subject to things like bugs and pests and all that sort of thing. So you don't need pesticides and you don't need to ship it very far. So the food miles that we hear a lot about are pretty low. Exactly. So we, yeah, we uh, save on food miles because we're point. Uh, producing close to the point of consumption. Um, for example, one of our crops, pea shoots, if you were to grow that above ground um, in the, or somewhere in the northern hemisphere, you would probably get six to eight harvests a year. Uh, in a greenhouse, it may get between 25 and 30, but in here, in our farm, we're in a controlled environment, you can get up to 60 harvests a year for that wow. crop. So you get 60 harvests of those because it's such a controlled exactly. environment. Uh, Morgan, let me bring you in here because, look, it's fascinating this. Is this going to be the future of farming? Is this where we'll get our food from from now on? This is definitely one of the options. Aeroponics, we're going to be looking much more at the sea space and where we can harvest different sorts of seaweeds, even shellfish in, in locks and different sort of waterways. Lots of opportunities for mushrooms, which love to be grown in dark, dank places. We've got a lot of those in London. <laughs> and the use of those is really growing so with lots of different options available to us it doesn't just have to be the traditional idea that we have of farming um, when we look at something like this i mean as i said really high tech lots of lights lots of science that goes into this it almost makes you think of a regular farm as being pretty inefficient loads of land lots of grazing all that sort of thing this is probably quite an efficient way to do it and you don't need lots of things like pesticides exactly because we're also looking at what's in the micronutrients of our food this is a big thing it's not about quantity as much you know we've already had a lot of quantity it's also about quality what's in the you know as, as it's already been mentioned these are really nutrient dense and we're going to be looking for for that in all of our food suppliers as times go forward um, because we're going to want a, a lot for, you know, a lot bang for our buck really yeah uh, and Richard just a word on you in terms of what you've got here so what co-founded a couple of years ago a few years ago now isn't it and then you've got big expansion plans in the neighboring tunnels yeah so we started this in the idea sort of came out in 2012 and 2014 we did a crowdfunding campaign and raised 650,000 pounds in our first round um, and then from there we built the farm and then we started supplying to the local markets and then retail uh, and now we're planning to expand into the rest of the farm Currently behind me, you can see what we've got here is about 500 square metres. We've got the ability to scale that up to 3,500 square metres just on this site alone. And they're also looking at other sites around the country to expand into. Good luck. Thanks a lot of work. Much. Nice to see you both. We'll talk more a little later. Uh, so there you have it. That's uh, what is growing underneath your feet uh, if you're in South London at the moment. Uh, really fascinating. I will have to say I wouldn't want to be down here on my own. Uh, it's a little bit creepy and it's a bit of a maze, uh, but nonetheless, uh, really impressive stuff that they're doing down here and potentially one of the answers to sort of those food shortage issues that we've been talking about all week on the programme about where our food will come from in future. Uh, more from me after seven. See you then. Because if you're fascinated, as a lot of people are, but what's underground? Your mm. tunnels, air raid shelters, that kind of thing, maybe old tube uh, lines, that kind of thing.
Ben is down one of those right now, 33 metres beneath the streets of Clapham. And uh, what an extraordinary place this is. Explain, Ben. Yeah, good morning to you. You might be able to make out that rumble of the tube line just next door. Uh, and yeah, we're about 100 feet. It's about 30 metres or so below ground in this disused uh, air raid shelter. Um, so yeah, by very definition, if the weather could be doing anything outside. I would not have a clue. But in here, you might make out that they're growing all sorts of different crops. It's a, an underground farm, vertical farming, and it's um, using some pretty high tech kit to grow some of the stuff that might appear on your plate. They sell this stuff to supermarkets and restaurants in and around London and actually across the country. Uh, and it's all the work of Stephen, who's with me. He's from Growing Underground. Stephen, good morning to you. And Luke's with us. And I'll explain uh, what Luke's relevant to say. Good morning to you. Um, talk to me about what you've got here, because it all looks very impressive, all very high tech, and you're growing salad. Why? Why so far underground? So... Well, when you zoom out, uh, we've got sort of in, in the world, we need uh, a lot more food. And so you've got 60% uh, more food needed by 2050, 2 billion extra people. And we've got... ...agricultural land to feed people. So we're creating new fertile lands underneath London. And we're close to the markets. Uh, we control all of our inputs, and then we get as much mass as we can from every square meter, and 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 intensify yields. And, and crucially, you get many more sort of harvests, don't you? Because if this was grown on soil on the land, you, what, you might get five or six a year. Here, you get up to sixty harvests a year. Well, in the UK, you'd probably get like three crops per summer. Um, but then, yeah, in, in a glass house, probably twenty-five to thirty. Uh, we get sixty-two plus crops a year if you're talking about pea shoots. So this is how we can really intensify those yields. And and then we stack that on top of each other in terms of vertical farming. Now, Luke's with me, and you're at a university, and you work with look, yeah. farmers, agriculture, and technology, and bringing the yeah. two together. Talk to me about you know the relevance of somewhere like this, because great, look, we're growing salad things yeah. here. You can't grow potatoes and carrots in somewhere like this. No, can you? no. So, um, as Stephen said, um, this is all about urban farming. So, trying to solve a social issue around getting food closer and nearer to. Um, to people in the city. However, I mean, the bed bedrock of food production will always be farmers. So um, growing potatoes is never going to be, or and, you know, it's unlikely to be efficient to be done in underground. Um, so a lot of the technology innovation happening there is to help small farmers um, better use their, their land um, in an environmental way. So I see this as a complementary solution rather than a, a, a fragmented one. And also one of the issues is land loss. We know that you know there's yeah. so many yeah. pressures on land, be it housing yeah. and be it development of other things. So actually yeah. farms are getting smaller. So this could be one way to use land that we do have more efficiently. Yeah, so, so uh, examples like growing underground where you're using land which otherwise wasn't used at all for growing produce is amazing. Um, but also on land loss, um, there are other ways of farming the land which will help uh, you know, improve the topsoil. And we have to remember, healthy soil reduces carbon more than any other means of, of, of reducing carbon dioxide, which is helping climate change. So um, again, um, solutions like this are fantastic, but it's not going to work for everyone, and you can't grow everything this way, so you have to use other solutions as well. It's so interesting, isn't it? And Stephen, just a word on, you know, it looks like it's very energy intensive. Lots of lights, lots of water, lots of plumbing, lots of cooling, all that sort of thing. How do you make sure that that is environmentally friendly? So it's all powered by renewables. Um, we buy all our, our, our energy in from a renewable supplier, from solar, PV and wind. Uh, so that's how we, we manage that. Um, but yes, energy is one of our inputs. But the, the major inputs around us are, 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 are staffing uh, and employment costs. And inevitably, we're, we're working to redeploy our labour as we uh, start to automate our farm. Good luck with it. I know we've got big expansion plans. Thanks for now to both of you, to Stephen and to Luke. So um, there you have it. That's what they're doing down here, uh, like I said, about 100 feet below the ground uh, in Clapham. Uh, and this place is a real rabbit warren. It goes on for miles. Uh, so I'm not going to go too far because I don't want to get stuck down here. I'll see you a little later. It's it really is.